So before we get too far, I just want to describe padding and margin for you. And the best way to understand padding and margin is to think of two containers and some contents. So you've got a parent container, a child container, and contents. In this case, the parent container is represented by the outside line. Child container is the second line with the purple. And the contents is this rows uh, section. Okay, so for the purpose of understanding this, parent container, child container, content. Now, by default, um, the way the web works is if there are no instructions to do otherwise, contents automatically expand to fill their container, and those containers automatically expand to fill their containers. And so, without any instructions at all, rather than seeing three different layers, all you see here is the size of the contents because the contents has automatically expanded to fill the, its container and that is the child container and the child container is automatically expanded to fill the parent container and so the only thing that's really visible is the, is the contents. So income, padding, and margin. Margins move the child container away from its parent container. So if this is the child container, a margin moves the child container away from the edges of its parent container. And so if you apply a margin to the child, it moves it away from the parent. Conversely, padding moves the contents away from the edges of its container. So again, if you apply padding to the child container, it moves the contents inward or away from its edges. So in order to get this effect where the, the parent container is larger than the child container and the child container is larger than its contents, you add padding and margin to the child container. Child container moves its container in from the, um, fr or away from its parent and padding moves its content away from its edge. So if this helps, you can think of margin as pressing outward and padding as pressing inward. So on our, um, on our overall widget, if we were to add margin to the overall widget, it would move the widget away from the thing that contains it, which in this case is the sidebar. If we add padding to the overall widget, it moves the contents that of that overall widget away from its edges. And that's what we need to do here in this case. Because right now, the edge of our container is here and here and there and there. And we want to move the containers edges away or the contents away from the edges of the container and so we're going to add padding so we come back over here to our customization options for style one and now we say okay we want to add widget padding to this and if we hit save again Now we've got overall padding we can add. And we can do this one of two ways. We can either style all of the sides the same, or we can do them all differently, or we can do a combination. For example, we could say 20 pixels here. And if we um, save this, and then come back over to our page and refresh it, what that padding has done is it has pushed everything away from the edge. Now, the reason why the heading is pushed further away than 20 pixels is that the, is that the heading comes default with some margin at the top and the bottom. So if we come over here to the Firefox for a second and just look at that. This is our, our heading inspect that element and you can see that this heading has this bright yellow heading above and below which is 
which is where the padding then starts. So if you want this to be more even, you would get rid of the padding on the top. Now that's not going to work exactly as described for another reason, but I'm still going to show you it. So we come back over here and in our overall padding what we'll do is we'll give our top padding zero pixels. So now the only thing is the margin. If we hit save, and then we come back over here and refresh this. You would have expected that margin to hold this up. Well, the problem is, is that when two margins meet each other vertically, they collapse. And right now, the margin for um, all of this is specified as zero. And so this tall margin across the column heading or at the top of the column heading and the margin uh, which is say something like 20 pixels and the margin of zero which is the top of the container collapses down to zero and so the margin doesn't push the container up however if we add one pixel of padding then the margin for the heading and the margin for the container are no longer touching each other and thus will not collapse so if we come over to our overall padding and we say instead of one zero pixels we say one pixel that preserves the padding for the or the margin for the um, heading now instead of doing that we could have redefined the margin for this heading and and we'll get around to that here in a minute but I just wanted to uh, make the point that you know if we want to just create a, a background for the overall widget we've done that right we've given the overall widget a background color we've radiused it we've added a drop shadow and we've added padding so that this whole thing stands off and if that's what our target was then we are completed